and welcome all developers, creators, brands, augmented reality pioneers, and everyone else in our community of explorers. Today, we launched the Niantic Lightship platform. From the first days of Niantic, our goal has been to create augmented reality experiences that can be enjoyed by millions of people around the world and the platform which can power them. At Niantic, we believe humans are the happiest when their virtual world leads them to a physical one. Our technology encourages people to go outside, exercise, and maybe most importantly, connect with other people in the world. Through Ingress to Pokemon Go, Pikmin Bloom, and the forthcoming Transformers Heavy Metal, people around the world are exploring their neighborhoods, catching Pokemon, seeking out the interesting hidden gems in their local parks, and interacting with friends. Movement and interaction are basic requirements for health and happiness a lesson the pandemic has reinforced for so many of us. Creating those experiences has been so exciting and rewarding for us. And yes, we've always known that transforming humanity's relationship with technology by merging the physical and virtual worlds will require the ideas and perspectives of as many people as possible. That's why today, I'm pleased to announce we're opening up our platform so developers and creators like you around the world can realize their own visions for augmented reality. We call it Lightship. We've been working with some early explorers on early versions of the technology for the last several months. Today, you'll see what they've built using the Niantic Lightship platform. What we're showing and releasing today is just the first chapter, the first set of technology and services with many more to come, all focused on the goal of enabling developers to create new planet scale augmented experiences. To catalyze these efforts, today we're also announcing the Niantic Fund, a $20 million fund to invest in companies that are building the next generation of AR experiences on our platform. To learn more, go to lightship.dev. Today's an exciting step on our journey to open up our platform to empower all of you to help invent the future of augmented reality. But before we tell you what you can do with our platform, I wanna take a step back. Today, we stand at the threshold of the next transformation in computing. Our mission at Niantic is to inspire people to explore the world together, to draw people into the physical world, to help them stay active, and to connect them with the people, places, and history that form the bedrock of their own neighborhoods. I believe our mission as a company paves a way for technology to serve humanity. As I wrote in our blog earlier this year, I believe augmented reality can help us succeed in that mission. But the fact is, the future we believe in is far from certain. Fortunately, we live in the moment when it will be decided. About once a decade for the last 70 years, a new computing platform arrives and revolutionizes the way we work, play, communicate with each other, and lead our lives. From mainframes to personal computers to cloud computing to the mobile phone you hold in your hand today. We're now at the beginning of another one of those shifts, and it could be the most consequential one yet. This transition will truly blend the real and the digital world and how we see, move in, and perceive it. This new shift also arrives at the same time that many people are questioning the role of technology in our lives, asking if technology serves us or if we serve it. To begin to answer that question, we have to discuss the metaverse. If you're like me, the word metaverse triggers memories of some great science fiction, going back to Neil Stevenson, one of my favorite sci-fi writers, and his 1992 novel, Snow Crash. In the pages of Snow Crash and in films like The Matrix, the real world has become such a mess that people escape by immersing themselves completely in virtual worlds, disconnected and isolated from the real one. But is that truly destined to be our future? At Niantic, we don't think so. We see a future where we use technology to thrive as human beings, to build a better world, and to help people live richer and more fulfilling lives. And it's based on the idea that technology can draw people into the world, not isolate them from it. Unlike the sci-fi metaverse, the real world metaverse will use technology to improve our experience of the world as we've known it for thousands of years, as a place of purpose, novelty, and community. At Niantic, we ask constantly how technology can nudge people to explore the outdoors, exercise, and engage with others. Can it connect us with public spaces we barely know, help us meet up with friends, or even find new ones? Can it help us discover magic, history, and beauty hiding in plain sight in the places we know and those we've yet to explore? 
Making this magic into reality starts with technology. Technology that can connect the real world to a digital world, infused with data, information, interactive creations, and services. A metaverse. Building this real-world metaverse requires powerful tools, including hyper-accurate maps that let us fuse atoms and bits together within centimeters, and infrastructure that lets us share state among hundreds of millions of users. The end goal is to enable those vast millions of users to create, change, and interact with digital objects in the physical world and within an experience that is consistent and shared by everyone. Instead of enabling people to escape from the world, our goal is to use technology so people can engage with their world. We believe that this shift to the next computing platform and augmented reality is an incredible opportunity for developers like you to help shape the future and to build a new generation of important companies. So how do we build this future together? It's really, really exciting. We think now is absolutely the time to be doing this. We first had web, then it was social, and now it's really AR. What happens when the digital starts to cross over into the physical? We will have the ability to get you more connected. Connected. Allow people to interact with each other through that medium, which I think is where things start to get really exciting. Niantic has been a industry leader in a lot of the technology. Having Niantic Slideship ARDK lets us focus on, on the right things. Focus on the creative, making fun experiences or compelling experiences. Lightship accelerates what augmented reality can do. A set of tool that is almost off the shelf. Much more accessible, much more cost effective. Partnering with Niantic is incredibly exciting. That this is a collaborative space, right? You can't just build the future of AR alone. What Niantic is focused on with augmented reality is actually bringing people out into the real world. Together outdoors. To discover more of their environment, even their own neighborhood. I think the fact that like Niantic is technology with a purpose makes a huge difference. That's the promise of AR. The Lightship platform we use to power our own Niantic experiences includes a set of AR tools to help developers build realistic experiences, which we call the AR Developer Kit. That's the first chapter of the story, and it's what we're releasing today for all developers to use. Niantic's approach to creating AR experiences is based on three core pillars, understanding, mapping, and sharing. Taken together, these three foundational pillars, understanding, mapping, and sharing, comprise the toolkit developers will use to make extraordinary and magical augmented creations and overlay them onto the real world. Let's take a look at each in detail. Our semantic segmentation and inclusion APIs do the work of understanding the environmental elements in a place so the objects behave in believable ways. This means our deep learning-based computer vision technology can in real time distinguish among and identify objects in the real world, like sky, grass, trees, enabling applications to accurately interpret how augmented reality objects should behave in combination with the real world environment. Let's take a look at an example. That beautiful butterfly can appear to move naturally in part because our semantic segmentation tools understand the elements of the environment. That means the developers could focus on building the AR creation and not worry about writing code to understand where it is. As cool as it is to see that giant butterfly, Coachella is a great example of a shared real world event that we all wanna get back to as soon as we can. Because one person seeing a giant butterfly could be called a hallucination, while thousands of people seeing that together becomes magic. As powerful as our understanding technology is, it becomes even more powerful when used in conjunction with mapping. Any public environment in the real world where people can explore, gather, and connect can become a new experience. And a key to making that possible is the ability to map reality. In many ways, dynamic mapping is the core of Niantic. Real-time mapping needs to be fast, lightweight, and seamless. And that's exactly what our depth and meshing technology enable. Mapping reality means using cameras and computer vision to create a real-time map of the environment by dynamically building a mesh, which results in a machine-readable representation of the physical world. This enables developers to place virtual objects logically in the real world, and those objects can move and interact in a sensible way based on the physical dimensions and structure of the environment. Let's see an example of this technology in advance of a major historical milestone next year in the United Kingdom. Historic Royal Palaces is creating a display of flowers in the moat around the Tower of London to celebrate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. 
the flowers will also become an AR experience so that everyone can see them at the tower and around the world. It's one of the many examples of how AR can bring a dose of beauty, whimsy, and history into our lives. Let's turn to sharing. Sharing real-world experiences starts with multiplayer functionality, which allows people to play together and share interactions with virtual objects and each other in real places. AR that isn't shared is just, well, lonely. Our sharing technology enables players with different kinds of devices to experience and interact with the same augmented reality creations together. Shared location and shared state is the first step towards that real world metaverse where you can transform the world for everyone. Playing outdoors together is at the heart of what we love at Niantic. And our multiplayer tools are the core to helping developers create these kinds of new AR experiences, like this application that the PGA is building for their PGA Junior League members. Through AR, a familiar game can become something fresh and intriguing for generations of new players. Now let's see what happens when we combine the foundational experiences and tools in the ARDK, understanding, mapping, and sharing. Used together, they enable a new breed of AR that truly gets the real world. Manga, published by the Japanese company Shueisha, has been entertaining comic book fans for nearly a hundred years. Their works have inspired countless animated films and television series. And now, with mobile devices and AR, the wonderful characters of One Piece and many other manga can exist in the real world as well. We're very excited to see Shueisha's creative world of manga come alive in augmented reality. These are just a few examples of early applications that use the Lightship ARDK. They're the first chapter in a book that we want you to help write, one that redefines how we use technology. We've got loads more to show you about the tech and how it works. To do that, let's hear from Amanda and the product team. Lightship team, I want to introduce you to the tools and support available in the Lightship Augmented Reality Developer Kit, the ARDK. We've already looked at some exciting examples of what this platform can do, so let's dive into more of the specifics. ARDK is a cross-platform SDK that works alongside Unity and runs seamlessly on billions of Android and iOS devices around the world. Now we've made it possible for you as developers and creators to get up and running on ARDK with guides, demos, documentation, sample code, and more. Let's talk about the ARDK's key components and the creator capabilities they unlock. As John said, one thing that makes Niantic so unique is our focus on sharing real world experiences. But building shared experiences and gameplay involving AR content can be challenging, especially when it comes to synchronizing the virtual content, handling on-the-go user movement, and game interactions. ARDK's multiplayer APIs enable you to easily create AR sessions supporting up to five players concurrently. This allows for more interactive and collaborative use cases for your app that feel realistic and seamless by keeping the virtual content, the players, and their interactions all in sync, all in real time. Fast networking is also necessary to power real-time multiplayer AR sessions. For this reason, ARDK comes backed by a peer-to-peer -peer networking stack and a managed server out of the box. On top of this, ARDK provides some lightweight gaming functions like a player lobby system, a synchronized clock, and session persistent storage, making it easier than ever to build AR gameplay. These demos and multiplayer capabilities are just the beginning. Beyond enabling you to build more social AR experiences, ARDK also allows you to better understand the user's real world environment, and then use that understanding to create more realistic, more adaptive AR. ARDK provides a new unique set of computer vision based capabilities, specifically the kit's semantic segmentation APIs, enable the app to instantly identify different elements in the environment, like ground, sky, water, buildings, and more. These elements can be used to inform the way virtual content reacts in the space. 
For instance, you can create user experiences that bring in natural elements found out in the real world, like using the sky as a canvas to write messages or placing large scale virtual objects on the horizon behind buildings and trees. For real world exploration, the semantic segmentation tools allow developers to focus on the experience they wanna create while the ARDK does the work to understand the environment dynamically within your application. In addition to powerful multiplayer and semantic understanding capabilities, we're also empowering creators with a set of tools for forming a 3D map of an environment. For years, Niantic has been building and investing in depth perception technology using the basic functionality of today's smartphone cameras. Developers using ARDK can bring in a sense of depth into their games and experiences that work across billions of devices, both with and without LiDAR sensors. ARDK's depth technology automatically adapts to the device's sensors and capabilities without creators needing to add additional code to their app. With this depth understanding, ARDK creates a real-time 3D mesh map, or rather an understanding of the topography and surfaces around the user. This mesh map persists throughout the app session and expands and builds as the user moves around. That map can be used to create more visually realistic air layers and occlusions, or to better incorporate the laws of physics, like in collisions, bouncing, and rolling, or create an entirely new kind of 3D game board that accurately fits into the user's unique space. These are just a few examples of what our early beta developers have been building. And again, this is just the beginning. We're super excited to share our Lightship toolset with you and see what you'll create. And we wanna make it easy for you to get started. That's why as part of ARDK, you'll also get Unity examples, tutorials, videos, and additional support materials to help kickstart your development and provide guidance along the way. And beyond the ARDK toolset, our Lightship support team and community are here to help. We want to ensure that we're hearing your feedback, serving your needs, and supporting your success as you program and iterate. To do that, we've grown our Lightship support team and community platform. Here's our DevX lead, Erica, to talk a little more about it. I'm Erica Cato, Head of Engineering for Developer Experience. My team is here to ensure that you're able to become productive quickly with the ARDK so that you can focus on your creative AR projects. Your satisfaction and happiness are crucial for our success. To get you up and running smoothly, we want to ensure Niantic engineers and all members of the Lightship team understand what you need from our platform. The developer experience we want to create is based on an exchange of ideas and input, and that means we'd love to hear from you on how our platform can be better. And to support the ARDK tools you've seen so far, we're building out a rich developer portal with the kind of support that'll foster community, collaboration, and creativity. Our developer experience team aims to be the voice and ears of our developers and grow our developer platform roadmap with you. In the coming weeks and months, we look forward to sharing more of what we've been working on as we build out the Lightship developer experience. We hope to see you in our discussion forums community channels, and other places within this thriving new developer community. Hopefully, I'll see you all one day, virtually and then in person. Head of Developer Relations for Lightship. I'd like to welcome you all on what I think is gonna be a pretty incredible journey. I've had the great fortune of spending the past six years working closely with developers in VR, but I've never been more excited than I am now about the opportunity that's opening up for developers today in AR. In recent months, I've been talking to AR developers around the world, and it's clear that we're on the verge of something big. Version one of the Lightship ARDK is ready for you, and so is our developer relations team. It's time to join the community and start building on the ARDK. We've already seen developers from around the world in our private beta showing us what's possible. The response we've been getting is pretty incredible. When I first heard about Niantic Lightship, I mean, I was super excited. Lightship has the, all the functions we need in one single SDK. It's so easy to just dig right in and start building. Also just, it makes life Easier. What we're looking forward to the most with Niantic's platform is being able to tap into the problems that Niantic has solved already. When Niantic came out with Lightship, they're not just this closed environment that's not sharing anything they know. 
They're literally giving out what they've learned. Democratizing the the higher end features. Anyone can use the ARDK to build something exceptionally interesting and engaging. It's gonna build this user behavior and user expectation across the board, uh, and that just lifts everybody. For Niantic to take that step and open that up and, and really kind of spread that knowledge and those tools out there for other people, it's really incredible. I mean, I think it provides the foundation of the groundwork that lets us bring those ideas to reality. Lightship has given us a major head start in the race of AR. You just have to rely on the stuff that works because you don't want your experience to be a live test demo. We really just leaned heavily into the meshing capability, the camera being able to determine what the geometries around you are. Somatic segmentation, being able to define depth so that a character can be behind a physical object. The occlusion that allows us to actually have the digital object have some sense of what's kind of around it. Depth estimation, you know, how far away is that wall? There would be a lot of work just building out these components. But with ARDK, that, that accelerates that process. It certainly makes it easier to get there too because Niantic's done the hard work for us already. When you look at the number of players that have experienced the tech behind Pokemon Go, Lightship really opens the door for those big ideas because it is something that is going to work at scale. Lightship works. Lightship was that easy part that just, it was there, it was done. The hard stuff was on me to work out how do I make this game. We know it works. We don't have to spend time tinkering just getting it to work. And so we can focus on making fun experiences or compelling experiences. Niantic is world class in terms of understanding AR technology and being able to really push those boundaries. Niantic is very proactive and supportive to the developer. Working with Niantic, I mean, it's been kind of the dream partner scenario. Almost like Niantic are your team. You've just, you've had this bunch of developers building out all these concepts for you. Having Niantic's backing and support is going to be the difference between just another game or one of the most played AR games in the space. We're trying things, we're prototyping, we're getting user feedback and coming at it from a really user-centric sort of product perspective so that we can build things that matter, that people will adopt. AR will be better if you're there trying to build stuff too. It's not completely out of your reach. That's the beauty of AR, when you can truly push the boundaries that can inspire and invoke an emotion of, of love or beauty. The idea that you can change your world, and, and that is just a phenomenally exciting idea. You know. From the Playcrafting Jams we hosted in the US, Europe, and Japan, to our first developer contest this summer, Creative minds like you have already used Lightship tools to create a wide variety of unique AR experiences. The concepts and designs we've seen so far are even more impressive than we could have hoped for. And we can't wait to see what happens as we open up the platform more broadly today. Many of you have been waiting a long time for Niantic to open up its tools and services to power your own apps. I've heard more than one of you actually shout out loud, finally, from Australia to Japan, across Europe, all over North America and around the world, the ARDK is now yours to use. This is clearly the start of something special. We're giving you the tools, but this platform will only be successful if you're successful. It's time for you to run with it and show us what it's capable of. If you ever wondered what you might do with our tech, and if you ever wanted to talk to Niantic about your ideas, here's your chance. The ARDK and the Lightship team are ready for you. We look forward to working with you to build the future of AR. I'm Megan Hughes, Head of Lightship Marketing at Niantic. You've already heard so much about our vision and had a glimpse of what we are building with some of our brand partners across the globe. I'm excited to now dive in with more details around what brands and developers have started building with ARDK. Just as mapping APIs unlocked innovation and created companies we never would have imagined, the AR map will do the same. When I first started working in AR in 2009, the ideas were plentiful. 
but the technology wasn't quite there yet. And over the last few years, we started to see more exciting types of AR experiences made possible with location-based AR. And now these possibilities are coming to life with Niantic's Lightship platform. Since 2015, Niantic's games have put a smile on millions of people's faces. Our team has battle-tested both the technology and the best practices for creating truly meaningful AR experiences. Today, brands and artists want to create experiences that provide value and bring meaningful connections to their audiences. Augmented reality helps do just that. It's a perfect catalyst for bringing people together and driving movement versus disconnecting people from the world around them. Over the last year, we have worked closely connecting our developers with our creative partners across various industries, from travel and tourism to sports and entertainment and history and education. And while these artists and creative leaders have different products, they share a common goal of unlocking new ways for AR to enhance the human experience. It's been so exciting to work with these teams and come up with new ways to use the ARDK together. And like the apps John highlighted from the PGA, the Historic Royal Palaces and Shueisha, creators are using location-based AR to connect people, to bring stories to life, or simply celebrate milestones with their community in more intimate ways. And there's so much more. From Lightful in Japan to the Science Museum in the UK on over to Warner Music in the US, Innovative brands are unlocking more ways to bring a little magic to people's lives. Here's a bit of what they've been working on with Niantic. The time is now for AR because realistically we have platforms like Lightship AR and DK making it possible for creatives to utilize these tools to build experiences. Lightship is really a way for the PGA of America to bring golf experiences to more people. Innovation can come from anywhere. It can come really big or come really small. As we always think about it is like, how do we widen the funnel of golf? And that's what this effort is gonna do. Trip is a wellness platform. It's really about getting present and being connected to the moment. And what Niantic is enabling for us is absolutely the ability to build that overarching meta layer that ties everything together through a sense of community, connection to the environment, connection to place. え、シュエシャは、え、創業 so connecting with history is, is fundamentally important to anybody, particularly young people who are very interested in their identity. That's a really important thing. And this augmented reality app will take us beyond these incredible historic walls and enable historic royal palaces to reach an audience far greater than we would normally be able to do. The amazing thing about AR is that it can help us adapt those real life experiences into emotional landscapes that we feel and breathe in the digital space. Super Blue, it is a lean forward experience. You, you step into the artwork, you engage with it, you immerse yourself in it. Yeah, I mean, the technology becomes almost invisible there. They don't have to dig too much into how to make it happen. Now, sometimes developing that from scratch is, is cost prohibitive, frankly. We've always been very limited by what we can do because we didn't have access to a platform that kind of had it all built for us. And I really do believe that what Niantic is doing is really bringing that to the present. With Niantic's Lightship ARDK, they have a platform that we can utilize. We're able to save so much funding on the building of the kind of infrastructure. And instead we can focus on the creative and the experiences that really engage fans. You know, one of, one of the many advantages of that is that it's proven technology. 
Um, it's obviously, it's, it's proven because there have been some really large successful apps built on the back of that technology. Having their tech at our fingertips will enable us to create more social experiences between our artists and their fans. Partnering with Niantic is incredibly exciting because we have a core set of shared values. In the same way as Superblue is about connecting people, it's about connecting people to do things together, to communicate together, to participate. To explore new experiences, to engage with others, and to creating a sense of community. AR really helps us fulfill our mission because our mission is to share these incredible places. AR enables us to do that because you can take elements of that and you can put it onto people's devices wherever they are. So for us, it's, it's an incredible opportunity to be working on this. So inspiring. To see these early ideas come to life brings a sense of awe and wonder about the new experiences to come. So whether you're an artist, a massive brand, startup, or just someone with a story to tell, with Niantic, developers can easily build the apps of your dreams. In addition to the applications we preview today, we have dozens of other brands working on their own unique experiences. You will start to see them this year and into 2022. We can't wait to see the impact these applications will have on their fans and to see what you'll create now that you have access to the first part of the Lightship platform. I hope you can see why we're so inspired to open the ARDK to developers around the world. The tools available today will help you create new AR experiences, which feature the best multiplayer, semantic segmentation, and real-time meshing. The proof is in the demos you just saw. To be clear, we're far from done building and sharing new tools to help you create incredible, immersive, real-world AR experiences. As I said earlier, our aim in building these tools and this platform technology is to open a new world of possibilities to millions of developers around the world. There's one more thing I wanna to share today. Since the beginning of Niantic, we've wanted to build a 3D map of the world. For AR developers working today, that means the Niantic map or visual positioning system. Building this map is one of the grand challenges of augmented reality and it's key to making the real world come alive with information and interactivity. Our visual positioning system will allow you to place virtual objects in a specific location and have that object persist so one person can leave a virtual object for someone else to find. I'd like to show you what a working VPS from Niantic looks like. This is live production code. So far, we've been able to add thousands of locations to this dynamic 3D map of the world. The VPS will be available to developers next year and will complement the tools in the ARDK and the entire Lightship platform to bring real world global game boards to life. We're excited about the experiences that we're building here at Niantic. We know that we don't have a monopoly on ideas or creativity. The experiences and applications that you build will change the way people understand, interact with, and explore our world. The fact is, a real-world metaverse is not owned by any one company, and it should build on our shared world and humanity, rather than seeking to replace or subvert it. That vision of the future drives us to build this technology platform and tools so creators can build a healthier, more entertaining, and more fulfilling world. To everyone who has joined us on the Lightship journey so far, Thank you for being our fellow explorers. To every other brand, business, developer, artist, and creator out there, no matter where you are in the world, please join us as we explore this new frontier in technology together. So why build with Niantic? Why build with Niantic? Why build with Niantic? Why build with Niantic? Because Niantic is making developing AR way more accessible and is allowing developers to actually focus less on how the tools work and more on just being able to build out their vision.
It allows us to stitch our art into the real world in ways that hasn't been possible before. We're building with it because of all the stories and great experiences that we can create across entertainment, sports, and e-commerce. Because they enable creativity for music experiences. Because we share the mission. We want to see people out in the world exploring, being healthy, connecting, and expressing themselves. より豊かな表現にしてくれるからです。Because we think that it could bring what our artists do to a massive audience in a very meaningful way. Why build with Niantic? To create a better future that inspires communities across the world.
Welcome everybody, wherever you're watching in the world, we're so glad to have you. Uh, as the presentation was rolling, we were keeping one eye on the questions and we're excited to answer a bunch of them right now. Uh, lightning round of introductions for you. I'm Dan Morris, Director of Developer Relations for Lightship. I'm Amanda Witt, I'm a product manager on the AR team at Niantic. Uh, Richard Bailey, a Senior Director for the AR Platform. Anthony Mayes, Engineering Lead at the AR team at Niantic. And now straight into your questions. Our first one, uh, excited for Lightship. Any chance it'll be open for all? I'm no developer by any means, but I love tinkering around with Unity and making simple games. Amanda, you want to take that? Yeah, I can take that one. Um, so, you know, I think one of the great things about ARDK is that you just really need a little bit of Unity experience and it is actually pretty easy to go and pick up. I think one of the cool parts is that you really don't need to be an AR kit or AR core expert to start using the features that are baked into the ARDK. Um, and then I also just point our developer community to our developer portal. We've got awesome videos on getting started, basically an ARDK 101 session, and our whole support team is really there to, to help you. Our next question, which I think you should probably also tackle as well, uh, comes from Shane Hoffa, and it's what is the pricing? So our goal with you know ARDK is really to make it as free as possible. Um, so you know we're really trying to grow the experiences that are available in AR and broaden the number of apps that are out there and um, help remove barriers for the developer and creator community. Um, so that said, you know with some of our features that are cloud connected, like our multiplayer services. Um, we are running uh, servers and, and that's all kind of baked in. And so for you know, some developers who are using that at large scale, there are going to be some costs associated with that usage. But uh, for most developers, for the average developer, um, the ARDK is free to use. Thank you. Uh, we've got a question from Alexis Delforge. I remember you, Alexis. Hi, thank you for watching. Uh, and the question is uh, map. Next year, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Uh, well, uh, as John previewed in the presentation, uh, VPS is not available today. It is in development, uh, and uh, we, we expect to uh, make it available next year. We'll have a lot more to say about this at our first developer conference in May of next year, uh, so uh, tune in then. Uh, our next question is from Paul Sizemore. How can we use TensorFlow or computation vision to identify and overlay certain objects with supplemental data? Um, so for that one, I would say that um, it's important for developers to share more with us what precise use cases they're after so that we can identify how we can expand uh, ARDK functionality like semantic segmentation to ourselves um, be able to support those features without requiring developers to run another uh, resource intensive um, system on the device. So um, I would definitely recommend to uh, share more details uh, on our Discord and uh, we'll follow up more in depth with that question. Uh, we've got another question here, which is one of my favorites. It's what, what kind of AR app should I make? And uh, I, I, I am not a genius about what kind of AR app you should make, but I'll, I'll give you the best advice that I think I ever heard about what kind of app to make. Uh, it's to imagine a Venn diagram, and in one bubble is the thing you're really passionate about, and in the other bubble is what you think the market could be interested in, in terms of consumers wanting to spend time and money. And whatever is right in the center of that Venn diagram is probably the app that you should make. I think it's terrific advice, and that's, that's what I pass along to any developer whenever I'm asked a version of this question. Uh, okay, this next question uh, uh, is from Lane the Train, asking, I would definitely like Niantic, Niantic to discuss Wayfarer and ways that it can be improved. Anthony, maybe you can take that. Uh, yes, we don't really have uh, any announcement to make about this today, but uh, it's true that Wayfair is another one of the uh, Niantic products that uh, developers and um, users love and uh, I guess watch this space for future announcements. Uh, <laughs> this is a fun question. Your site says we are no longer accepting people into the ARDK <laughs> beta. How can I sign up? 
Amanda, I think you can answer that one. Uh, yeah, so we'll look into that and make sure that it's it's all working. Um, we should be accepting people to you know register now. It should be fully open on the site, so we'll go talk to our uh, web team and make sure that uh, everything is is working properly. Uh, here's a great question. Curious to hear any notes on interoperability between ARDK and other tools like Unity's AR Foundation, XR Interaction Toolkit, etc. Uh, Richard, maybe you can tackle that. Sure. Um, I mean, there's a, I think a lot of space uh, there for things to to work together and align. In some cases, uh, you know, the ARDK was uh, was built to be kind of a, a standalone um, uh, toolkit for building, you know in world real world games mm -hmm. and um, and that's uh, that's super you know handy uh, other things like layering on MRTK to uh, enable some kind of spatial interaction UI elements um, certainly should be feasible. We haven't done investigations, but we'll follow the conversation on Discord and uh, and and see what people try to do and, and what comes up there. Uh, here's a question being that we are building the metaverse together, which we certainly are. Can you explain how intellectual property works in using the development kit? I'll take a, a whack at that, but Amanda, I'd be, I'd be curious about your thoughts too. I mean, really, we're offering uh, ARDK. We're offering tools and APIs. Um, you know, the internet is built on millions of APIs, and uh, uh, we just want to empower you to make AR experiences that you couldn't make before. Those experiences will, of course, be yours, not ours. Uh, Amanda, if yeah. you want to fill in on that. Yeah, yeah. I think um, you know what ARDK provides are you know a set of functionalities for really understanding and mapping your environment, and then you know being able to play these experiences together. So, um, as far as you know, assets and you know content that's actually within the app, right? That's not something that you know ARDK is really touching. Um, we're just enabling for more interactive and more realistic experiences with ARDK. A question from Michelle Keith, where do folks learn more about the developers conference in May of 2022? Uh, the answer to this and almost any other question about how to stay up to date about our announcements and our roadmap, et cetera, uh, is lightship.dev. Uh, lightship.dev is open uh, right now. Uh, we really encourage you to sign up, register, download ARDK, uh, and you can certainly uh, stay up to date uh, at that site. Uh, a question from uh, Michael, any outreach for educators? We have several use cases and would love to have access to Niantic's knowledge bases to assist non-developer instructors on building content. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say that there, you know, ed education is one of many non-gaming, uh, you know, ver uh, verticals, segments that we're very, very excited about. Uh, one of the things that really motivated us to embark on this uh, Lightship initiative in the first place was the fact that we feel that Niantic's technology can supercharge uh, development in all kinds of AR verticals, including stuff Niantic has no you know, plans in, in the near or far future to get into ourselves. So enabling you to do that is something we're very excited about. Uh, educators uh, should uh, feel welcomed to join our community. Drop us a line. We'd love to know what you're, what you're working on and thinking about. And I can maybe uh, add to this a little bit. Um, uh, in the aftermath of the George Floyd protests last year, Niantic made a commitment to work uh, with um, predominantly like minority and lower income students uh, with Cal State East Bay and Game Ahead. And as part of that, uh, a number of us have volunteered to give guest lectures. So we are continuously producing content um, that's for education mm -hmm. uh, that builds into this mass also the content that's been built for the launch today. So we're getting more and more videos and tutorials and um, instruction in various formats targeted at developers or non-developers of various degrees of experience. So uh, this mass of uh, educational content will only grow and that's definitely something that we encourage the community to, uh, uh, to use uh, for their classes or for their workshops. Yep. Atif asks, can you let us know how you see ARDK working with a full 5G and future 6G connectivity? Do you think ARDK might work better on a standalone 5G network? Uh, Richard, you want to take that? Hey, that's a, that's a great question. Um, 
So we, we've, uh, you, we've already done a number of demos, if you look at our uh, Urban Legends videos and so on and so forth, where we've uh, produced uh, uh, you know, experiences on 5G. Um, a couple of the, the really winning features about 5G is the uh, low, very, you know, very low latency and then also uh, high bandwidth. Um, and then uh, for, for world-centric AR, of course, we also have kind of the, the geographic sharding and storage of data close to where it needs to be served up uh, for in-the-world content. So we know that these uh, these will continue to happen. Uh, we're you know in the process of forming partnerships uh, and looking for where 5G uh, is is kind of going to roll out the the best and fastest for for edge compute and so on and so forth. So we know it works with 5G that's working today, even with the games you go out and play today, um, they they work fine on 5G. But they'll work even better as the 5G edge uh, compute and, and capability uh, starts to roll out. Yeah, and I, I would say I'm really excited about the possibilities there with some of our social features, our multiplayer AR, enabling more interactive games, a lot more players, a lot more you know movement and interaction, um, as well as you know 5G with you know some of our future mapping capabilities and you know bringing you know real world experiences out you know to different points of interest and being able to serve that up um, in a really interesting way. So super excited about that future. Street Surfer asks, would you give beginners advice on how to start developing apps from ARDK in terms of basic knowledge and app mastering? Uh, this is a great question. Uh, Anthony, you want to take a, take a shot at it? So yes, since the ARDK is mostly built to be used with Unity, I would definitely recommend um, learning up Unity, so following tutorials. Uh, YouTube is a great resource uh, for walkthroughs where you follow somebody on their screen and what they're doing. And I think uh, once you ramp up with your knowledge of Unity, um, using the RDK should be pretty easy because you will already have the notions in terms of designing interactive 3D experiences where uh, AR is just moving the camera in the space, uh, but it's not fundamentally different uh, to to other 3D experiences. So definitely like the more people can hone this, their skills on building 3D apps with Unity, they will be uh, very well set for, for using the RDK. I'll get a, a plug to, to our getting started example. Oh, yes. Yeah, so we have a, um, an example to help get your developer environment set up. And basically, it's an ARDK 101 getting you to Hello World with your first app. Um, so that's the place that I always suggest to, to get started. Take a look at the examples that we have up on the developer portal. Definitely. And we also have like our own YouTube videos yeah. uh, uh, with, you know, on the brand new Lightship uh, YouTube channel. Uh, with with walkthroughs, so uh, for depending on how you prefer to learn, there are definitely a lot of options available. Uh, on a similar subject, Stephen asks, will you be continuing and growing education and using your tools via tutorials, etc.? I yeah. know you put a lot of work into this. Uh, maybe you take this, Amanda. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you know, we're starting off with our you know YouTube channel. We have several hours of videos up there. Uh, we've got guides and uh, tutorials in our documentation, as well as some examples with uh, sample code. Um, we're definitely going to be continuing to grow out this content um, as we kind of learn what developers are using, what they want to know more about, what kind of tutorials work well, what don't work well. Um, we'll be definitely adding to the pool of you know, guidance and support that we're going to offer through uh, the portal and ARDK. You'll also be learning from each other because yeah. uh, the, the community is already in discussion and uh, we, we, we expect you to take advantage of uh, discourse and uh, you know, the developer to developer communication channels that we've built. Uh, teaching each other I think is going to be an exciting part of this journey. A question from Dennis Harper. The video showed a flower being identified by the app, but it seemed the CV objects were fairly generic. Is this something that can really be done? Uh, Richard, you want to jump on that? Uh, I, I was trying to figure out which video that, that was I referring there's to. There's a Royal Palaces um, video with all the flowers that are occluded by the tree. And I, I'd say we, that, in that particular video, I think um, not necessarily flowers being recognized. We definitely have a lot of environmental outdoor categories that um, are recognized like foliage or, or trees. Um, so flowers isn't quite in the, the semantic segmentation stack. Um, but I think in that particular video, we're showing how um, you can use uh, 
AR flowers and, and set up your space and then they're, they're occluded by, you know, different trees and, and movement that's happening in the space. Okay, so the flowers were, were augmented reality Those flowers, were actually and, augmented, and then the occlusion uh, yeah. was around the trees. I'm pretty, and I'm pretty sure yeah. that's uh, that, that was the video. Yeah. Uh, a, a question from Luis: Does the tracking work on high speed conditions first, like running, then on a bike, motorbike, car, or even on a drone? Is that think, um, <laughs> yes, so the tracking that we use in the LightGP RDK is using the tracking from the underlying system. So if on iOS, it's going to be our kit. On Android, it's going to be AR Core. So uh, we use the capabilities um, of the platform. And in terms of speed, I think a brisk walk is probably like what we can uh, um, say is a, a good limit. Uh, and it also depends a lot on uh, lighting conditions. So the the brighter, uh, the faster you, you can go. But um, drones or in cars, um, I I would hesitate to go that, that route if I were a developer on uh, the LightG platform. I'd, I'd like to encourage everyone else, be safe. <laughs> 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 you know, be, be cautious about what, what you're uh, trying to do on the bicycle too. <laughs> Definitely. What are some differences in capabilities or experiences between the metaverse Niantic envisions and the one that Facebook envisions? Well, I mean, speaking for Niantic, we, we envision a, a metaverse that is making the real world better. Uh, it's almost that simple. Uh, I don't say that necessarily to put us in contrast with any other company, but certainly our mission, our drive is to, is to help people get out into the world, to do it together and to connect with a, a reality that's layered on top of the one outside in, in meaningful ways. Uh, you know, that, that, is, that is our driving focus here. That's been the focus of our technology and our first party products. Uh, and you know, that's why we're just so excited to make it available to all kinds of developers and all kinds of verticals uh, today. We, we want to get people outside together, uh, building just a more interesting world together outside your, outside your doors. What is the best way for brands to find developers to develop on Lightship? Uh, Amanda, you want to take yeah. that? Um, so we have been in beta for the last few months um, and have had a few hundred developers as part of that early beta community. Um, and so we saw a lot of great connection and conversation that just kind of happened naturally through our community forum. Um, so a lot of fun, you know, uh, partnerships and connections kind of through um, those channels. And I would suggest that, you know, join the community, start the conversation, um, you know, meet others uh, and, you know, start to talk about your ideas because um, there, you know, could be others that are looking um, for, you know, for similar uh, for similar experiences, and, uh, and our community is I've found has been super super supportive of, of each other. Uh, we are getting a lot of questions about glasses. Um, let me take them all by saying that uh, there, there's nothing to re really share at this time beyond you know the, the publicly known fact that we're working on on some reference design with Qualcomm. Um, I, I will say that over a long enough time horizon, like we, we, we really believe that AR glasses will be uh, a very popular hardware and you know, we, we intend to be a, a major, uh, not only first party developer, but a supplier of tools and technology to help developers make magical experiences on those glasses. So if the question is like, do we have something specific right now to talk about? Definitely not. Uh, do we envision it as a big part of the future of AR? For sure. The next question is, could future development of this technology be a barrier for players spoofing their location? Rich, uh, Richard, you want to take that? Sure, um, I'd love to. Uh, we, location spoofing is, is definitely possible. We have a number of, of uh, techniques in place, even with our games historically, for detecting spoofed locations. Uh, and, uh, and we have uh, kind of cheat mitigations that are built into those uh, existing games. Uh, I think that will continue to be kind of a, a cat and mouse game uh, between uh, people who want to uh, want to find ways to cheat and uh, and will actively you know pursue ways of detecting and uh, and, and blocking those. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, would you say that Lightship is the right route to take with a project that doesn't necessarily use a lot of camera focused AR features? Anthony, can I get you to take that? Um, 
<laughs> that's a tricky question because it's difficult to um, really understand what the developer has in mind. Uh, uh, I, th I think we have to say, come, come to discourse. Yeah, come, absolutely. Come talk with us there. Let's engage in yeah. the deeper conversation uh, there. And uh, you know, it might be that we can help you brainstorm uh, to come up with interesting ways to add camera-based uh, AR. Uh, you know, to the experiences that, that makes the experiences better and enhances them. Yeah. But that's a deep question that we, we can definitely carry on in Discord. Yeah, there are lots of other ways to do, to do AR. Like, audio is a very often underappreciated uh, way to augment reality. So um, I wonder if that question was about that. And uh, here again, um, uh, especially placing audio sources is something that's available in Unity and that since the ARDK um, builds with Unity, you can take advantage of all the built-in tools and build like really rich experiences uh, with not too much extra effort uh, uh, to support uh, advanced techniques like spatial audio. I'd, I'd add to that too, we're coming from a place where the industry has been very uh, VR centric mm -hmm. uh, for a, a number of years. And so everyone's kind of got their VR hat and now they're saying, what, well, what can we do with AR? And, um, and we, we can help you cross that, that gap, that divide. So we're adding world understanding and mapping you know, to this. And with that, there, there are kind of a, there's another hat that we need to learn to put on to figure out how we can take what we knew from, from VR, but then also layer in the, the world understanding and, and mapping capabilities to say, okay, now we're doing more stuff in your world. So let's continue that conversation in the community. Totally. And sorry to <laughs> even double Please. down on yeah. that. Uh, for developers moving from VR to AR, I think that something that's really important is to consider the power of co-located experiences because not having a black screen in front of your eyes means that you can also interact with the people around you, not just the, the environment. And uh, I would definitely encourage developers to think of AR possibilities that way. Like, imagine, like, what you've been doing with VR, what if you could bring in other players who are in the same spot with you? And that, uh, that's one very core feature that uh, the Lightship ARDK is offering. And so, uh, yeah, definitely encourage devs to look into that. We're going to take just a few more. Uh, if, we, if we don't get the time to answer a developer's question here, Amanda, where, where can they go to get that question answered? Lightship.dev, right? <laughs> so yeah, come join us over uh, at Lightship.dev. You can create an account. We've got our community forum on Discourse. So um, definitely uh, go over there. Uh, a question from Dennis Harper. Can you say anything more about the Lightship Venture Fund? Uh, yeah, I can. Um, the, the, the motivating force behind Lightship is to kickstart the AR ecosystem. Uh, and, and get developers tools to build stuff Niantic could only dream of. Um, part of our commitment there is the Venture Fund, where we're trying to help stand up uh, startup companies in the AR space, uh, AR native young companies who are pushing in a direction that we are excited about. Uh, you know, that, that's something that we are excited to get involved in. So uh, the, the door is open if you go to the lightship.dev portal, um, there's a form where you can uh, make yourself known to us uh, and apply to be considered by the Venture Fund, and I, I encourage people to look at that. Uh, we'll take one more. Uh, can the AR persistent tracking work from a distance on large objects like buildings or terrain? Uh, Richard, you want to take a shot at that? Uh, yeah, so it, uh, you know, we, we detect you know, objects for uh, uh, you know, semantics and then also for occlusion. And so that's what you saw in some of the videos where objects are passing behind large buildings um, and, and such. I think over time, as we hear more use cases of what people would like uh, their, their, their games to be able to do with world understanding, we will add more sorts of capabilities of detection and semantics and so on and so forth to make those use cases very, uh, very reachable by the developers. Outstanding. Uh, well, there are a lot more questions. The scrolling kind of just goes on and on. We, we can't possibly get to them all here, although we wish we could. Uh, the conversation continues, like we said, at lightship.dev. Uh, uh, jump in there, ask us. We are all in there, the four of us. Uh, we'll try to get answers to your question. 
uh, please join us there at lightship.dev. And uh, we really look forward to this journey with you. Thanks very much for joining us. And thank you, my friends. Thanks, Dan. Thank you all. See you. Yeah. <laughs>